There are all kinds of crazy things that can happen out on the golf course, so it's not hard to find yourself in a situation where you just flat out don't know what the ruling is. Fortunately, the rules give us a way to deal with these kinds of situations by allowing us to play two balls when we're uncertain what to do. However, there are three very specific and important things that you must do to not only protect your scorecard, but to prevent disqualification. And that's what we're covering in this video. So first and foremost, this rule about playing two balls only applies in stroke play. In match play, you are not allowed to play two balls when you're uncertain about what to do, which could be a subject for another video, but just keep in mind this only applies in stroke play. Now here's the scenario. My ball came to rest in bounds, but it's right next to this out of bounds stake. And I'd like to move this stake out of the way because it'll obviously give me a much better shot, but I just can't quite remember if I'm allowed to move an out of bounds stake and I don't wanna risk a silly penalty. So at this point in time, I'm uncertain about the situation and what I'm allowed to do. So if I wanted to, the rules would allow me to finish the hole out by playing two balls. Then after the round or at any point in time before I turn my scorecard in, I would tell the committee what I've done and then they would tell me what the correct ruling was. So in this case, I would play a ball as it lies with the stake in place, and then I'd play another ball with the stake removed. But the very first thing that I have to do before I make my next stroke is I have to make the decision to play two balls. After we've made the decision to play two balls, the second thing that I should do is choose which ball I want to count towards my score by announcing that to my marker or to another player in my group. If I don't choose which ball I want to count, then the first ball that I play will be the chosen ball by default. Now, the reason why we're choosing a ball and creating this hierarchy between a chosen ball and a backup ball is because that's the order that the committee is going to use to determine what my score is for the hole. If the procedure that I use for the chosen ball is allowed by the rules, then the score for that chosen ball will count. But if the procedure that I used was not allowed by the rules, then the score with the second ball will count, as long as the procedure that I used for the second ball was allowed by the rules. The third and final thing that you must do is tell the committee. You always have to tell the committee when you've played two balls, even if you made the same score with both balls. If I fail to tell the committee, it's an automatic disqualification. Now let's wrap this all together and see how this actually plays out on the course. So I've got a great round going until I get to this par three where I hit this absolutely gorgeous rope into the trees. And as I approach my ball, I realize that I'm now uncertain about what to do. So I correctly decide to play two balls before I make my next stroke. I also announce to the players in my group that I'm choosing the second ball as the ball I want to count using the procedure of removing the out of bounds stake. I then play my original as it lies, which turned out to be a pretty decent shot, about 25 feet from the hole. I then place another ball and remove the stake. I hit this shot much better to about four feet from the hole. As we get to the green, you can see my original ball right here, as well as my chosen ball right here. At this point in time, it's worth noting that there is no required order that I'm supposed to play these balls. The order is interchangeable, so it's okay to alternate between the two balls until the hole is complete. Before I turn my card in, I tell the committee what happened. They correctly inform me that out of bounds stakes are boundary objects that I'm not allowed to move. So because I used a procedure that was not allowed by the rules, the score for my chosen ball will not count. So now we look at the other ball. Because the procedure I used for the other ball, which was playing it as it lies, is allowed by the rules, then the score for the other ball will stand as my score for the hole. So at the end of the day, I made a bogey. And that's how you correctly play two balls in stroke play when you're uncertain about what to do.